biology moments. Uh, today we're going to be talking about relationships within ecosystems, and our focus will be on symbiotic relationships. So, uh, looking at your paper, symbiosis. The definition is relationship in which there is a close and permanent association between organisms of different species. Emphasis on different species. We're going to be taking a look at three different types of symbiotic relationships. Mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. So let's go outside and take a look around what might be in your own backyard or in your own home uh, to represent mutualism, commensalism, or parasitism. All right, here we have in my very own backyard, an example of mutualism. We have a flower and a bee. Now, the thing about flowers and bees, they both benefit from their relationship with one another. And it's an example of mutualism. Flowers benefit because they require the bees to be pollinators for them. The pollen, which is produced by the stamen, or male reproductive part of the flower, is transferred by the bee uh, from the stamen of the plant to the stigma, which is the female reproductive part, of the same or of uh, different flowers. So that the pollen gets around. Now the bee also benefits because they need the pollen for survival. It's their main source of food. It gives them protein, fats, lipids, minerals, and vitamins. And it's also essential for hive growth. Alright, here's our example of commensalism. We have a bird's nest with some eggs in the tree. Don't worry, it's not real. Um, in this situation, the one benefiting would be the birds, both the parents and the babies. The height of the tree offers protection from a variety of predators. In the meantime, the tree is neither helped or harmed by the existence of the nest. Look at an example here of parasitism. Um, in the case of the flea and the household pet. This is Diesel. He's not really happy about sitting here. But he's going to allow us to talk about his potential fleas for the summer. Fleas and cats have a parasitic relationship because fleas need the cat's blood in order to survive. The cats don't need the fleas at all. In fact, they're nothing more than a nuisance. Uh, female fleas require a blood meal from the host, or the cat in this case, in order to lay their eggs. The flea life cycle progresses through egg, larva, pupa, and then adult stage. Fleas are truly parasitic in nature, um, and we know this because they will not emerge from their cocoons into adulthood until they sense vibrations, elevated carbon dioxide levels, and body heat, which would signify the presence of a host. Um, so they require the cat at the expense of the cat's comfort. Obviously, if you've ever had a pet, they find fleas to be itchy and troublesome. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that you've learned about symbiotic relationships across mutualism, parasitism, and commensalism relationships.